if you were a Husker basketball fan because Husker Hoops wins in overtime on the road at Minnesota, 81 to 79. They improved to nine and seven on the season and two and three in the Big Ten <clears throat> conference play. Now, just a friendly reminder for all the people out there. Okay. Nebraska finished last season with 10 total wins Ooh. and four wins in the Big Ten. Oh. So, um, Derek Walker with another incredibly impactful performance, 18 points, uh, or excuse me, 22 points, eight rebounds, seven assists. If I remember correctly, that's right. Jawan Gary had 18. Sam Greasel had 17. God dang. You're doing this off memory. So uh, and you're here's, a here's, bad man. Here's the, <laughs> here's the deal. Sip. Yeah. Um, Nebraska is one of the f- few schools or few programs going into this game that had every single starter averaging over nine points per game. Yeah, okay. Balance. They're balanced. Listen, some will try to diminish this win and mm-hmm. by saying Minnesota's terrible. Minnesota's yet to win a Big Ten game this year. I get it. This was a great win. This is a team that you that Nebraska fans have have wrapped their arms around. A lot of them. They, they don't want to get heart, their hearts broken again. So they're there's this, you know, it's always somewhat halting, right? Mm-hmm. But man, Walker was good, and they went to him. Yeah, man, everything was going through Walker. Everything. Mm-hmm. Well, so early on, he was more of a he. He was facilitating it. He does that, but he does it early on, and then later on in the game, as it progresses, I call him downhill Derek Walker. <laughs> downhill Derek. I, I told him that pregame. <laughs> Did I, you pregame of the Queens game? Did you? Yeah, I was. I was sitting next to a couple other media members, and and. Is he and, around? And D Walk comes over and I'm like, Derek, I was like, D Walk, I'm, I'm calling you downhill Derek Walker from now on. Do you like it? And he's like, I like it. He's like, I, I he's like, do. It, it works out well. I really like it. I mean, because if you think about downhill, it, he gets he, downhill. He catches, it, he catches it in that little half circle uh-huh. of the free throw line at the top of it, somewhere uh-huh. in there. And you just know he, but he's he's able to go either go left or right. He does. And he's vastly improved from last season. He is vastly improved. I mean, you talk about a player who's developed at Nebraska. Yeah. Man, he is, I mean, somewhat remarkable in how well he's developed. Mm -hmm. And your nickname for him is beautiful. Downhill Derek. Downhill Derek. Because not only does he... He he does what we want a running back to do. Yeah, not exactly. Not only does he get... (laughs) Now, you've noticed this because you you are an astute observer of sport. Thank you. Um, You've no. He gets downhill. Yeah. He no. No. Wait a second. He gets down. He'll bring the ball up mm-hmm. the court like a guard and get downhill. Exactly. I mean, downhill. Derek is not just catch the ball near the, the foul stripe and get downhill. He'll bring the ball up the court and get downhill. How many times in the last three games have you seen him go 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 wire to wire? Yeah. Take the ball inbound. Take it up himself and go to the basket in, in crucial situations. Downhill, I mean, that, that's that's part of their game plan is yeah. to have whether it's Derek Walker bring the ball up, whether Six, it's Sam, nine, whether it's Sam Greasel to, to to post up or, or back down somebody in right. the paint, like downhill. Whatever, Sam doesn't whatever, sound as yeah, good, but it doesn't sound as good, but no. it still it still yeah. works. But I, I mean, and we get this off the text line from Brent in Minnesota: total change in style. And that's kind of been the whole discussion point this entire season sure. is that they've, they've adapted or adopted, I should say, this new identity of defense first and yeah. defense is going to keep you in games that you're not supposed to be in. Mm-hmm. Um, they got offense in this game, though. They did. Yeah, they which, shot the ball well, which they had offense. Minnesota also shot really well to begin the game. Mm-hmm. And, and Minnesota was leading at half. <clears throat> Nebraska ended up coming back on the road. Wasn't necessarily a hostile environment by any means, mm-hmm. but you have to on, honestly sit here and go, all right, in previous seasons, mm-hmm. is Nebraska winning this game? Re- ah, good question. Is, is also Nebraska able to win a game in overtime? This is what the difference was. Nebraska hit its free throws. Mm-hmm. That's a lot different than the previous seasons. By the way, Nebraska hadn't won an overtime game since February of 2001. Jeez. The reason they were able to win this one, a lot of the reason – was their foul shooting down the stretch? Yep. They hit, they hit shots at the line. Um, whereas so many, well, Sam Griesel hit four straight free throws in the last twenty-one seconds. Okay, put, put Sam Griesel hit. Sam Griesel hit four straight free throws in the last twenty-one seconds. Right, Nebraska was sixteen of twenty-one. Sixteen of twenty-one at the charity stripe mm-hmm. on the day. Now 
com- contrast that to Michigan State. Yeah. Where what were they? Eight of nineteen. Well, yeah, something from, like that. From the free throw line. Yeah. Also at Michigan State, you had the trio of Breidenbach, Kase Tomanaga, and CJ Wiltshire shooting one of thirteen from something beyond like the arc. That. Yeah, yeah. By the way, Nebraska at the stripe, and I and I've emphasized it on our show. I've said many times on th- this show. If Nebraska is going to have the kind of season it wants to have, they're going to have to win a lot of close games because they're not yep. going to blow anybody, anybody out, yep. not many people. And that means what? They're going to have to hit free throws in clutch situations. Eight of 11 in overtime mm-hmm. on Saturday. That, that's, I mean, that's not the only reason they won, but that's a big reason. Yeah. If, if, you, if you clank three of those, you might not win this game. Well, you, you'll remember that Minnesota hit a three in, at, at the buzzer yeah. in overtime, yeah. both in, at the end of regulation and yeah. overtime. Yeah, you're okay with it if they hit a three. They ended up hitting it, but you're like, all right, we, we still are up by two. We, right. Like, there's not, there's no concern there. Right. There's no concern of or that 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 press uh, on your shoulders as a defender mm-hmm. when you're de- you're only up by two with six seconds left and Minnesota's inbounding it. You're not worried. Can't foul. Can't sh- foul on the shot. Can't let him get an open shot. Can't get him, let him get an open look. There's nothing. There's not. There's none of that. If you hit your free throws, which they did, they right. put, they put the game away. They were, you know. And here's the thing about that free throw shooting. It's a free throw shooting is. It's about mental toughness, Nick. Mm-hmm. It's not a physical thing. Yeah. I mean, any a sixth grade girls team should be able to go up to the charity stripe and hit twelve of twenty. Mm-hmm. I mean, really. Yeah. So it's it's a mental thing. Now this this and, and what I'm giving Nebraska credit here because they had to win this game. Sam Greaser was in the ticket telling yeah. Jake the other day, we have to win this game. This is a month. We have to win it. Well, this so is- there was pressure. There was some pressure, and they still hit exactly. free throws. Now here and, and, and a reason another reason not to diminish this win by saying, Oh, it's just Minnesota. Minnesota was desperate. There these were two teams desperate for a win. And you could see in the way they were playing, there was mm-hmm. desperation. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't believe me, go back and watch the game and watch the Minnesota heads head coach at the end when he ben knew Johnson. That, ben Johnson, former Husker you. assistant. Yeah. When he knew they were going to lose. Yeah. I actually, as a human being, felt for him because mm-hmm. that because it was a crushing look on his face. There, there was an article published uh, in in Minneapolis over the weekend was firing Richard Patino. A mistake. Oh, see that, like, thing, see, like it's, start. It's, it's spiraling in his second year. I believe. I believe it's just his second year. Yeah, this is Ben Johnson's second. So year. It, it's already spiraling. And, and I mean, Nebraska fans are familiar with that. They know that feeling where 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 there's conversations are being brought up. That okay, that's interesting context to this because I I was struck by how crushed he looked, mm-hmm. and he's probably feeling pressure. This was a game for Minnesota where you look at it and say home game against Nebraska. Here's our first Big Ten win. Exactly. Now you're now you're zero four, zero and five. Yeah. And you're probably wondering, are we? When are we going to get one of these? Right. Yeah. I mean, because there, there's no. I mean, Northwestern just beat a God. top fifteen team on the road in Indiana what the at hell? Assembly Hall. What is going on with Northwestern? No clue. What's going? That's also after they lost Pete Nance, one of their best players, to the transfer portal. Ended I, up going to North Carolina. I think they're four and one in the yep. Big Ten. They are. So you have Northwestern, who's by no means a, a pretty good program and then or excuse me they are a pretty good program four and one you also have penn state who's competent good. yeah and, and nebraska is now uh, competent yeah a, a good basketball team like i'm i think we're at this point nebraska now i i get that the record's not sexy at nine and seven uh-huh but when you put it into context of, of the league they've played in, also the strength of schedule that Nebraska's faced and, and the number of quad one opponents, which I, I believe is is top 10 in the country, sixth in, in terms of strength and schedule, strength of schedule over the entire season. When you put everything into context and also remind yourself that this is a team that just won 10 games last year, you kind of sit here and go, a win against Minnesota on the road? All right, now we have a true shot against Illinois at home on Tuesday night. Oh, I think that's cre- and, it's and a credibility. You, know, you win. had a 16 point win against Iowa as well. Right. And, and push Purdue like, to here, overtime. Here we are. Push like, Purdue I, I overtime? think at the beginning of the season, you've kind of, I, for me personally, I've gone through this process of like, all right, I see what Nebraska wants to do. They tell us what they want to do. They end up trying it. And, and you can tell, you can see it on the floor. And then to it's all right. They've squeaked out a couple wins doing what they said they want to do now. Mm-hmm. And here they've done it consistently. Mm-hmm. Pretty consistently. I mean, 
Michigan State is yeah. I, I would it wasn't call, good. Call it anomaly, uh, anomaly. Uh, Kansas State, I suppose, but they've also bounced back well. Yeah, from those poor performances. Here's what I'd say about Michigan State. There's sometimes we get very myopic when we discuss sports, mm-hmm. and we just say what happened to Nebraska against Michigan State. What did Nebraska do wrong? What? What? Well, sometimes you got to say the other team did this, this, and this. And Minnesota, I think, played its best game on both ends of the floor of the season against Nebraska. Yeah, I think in some games you just tip your cap to the opponent and say, ah, I mean, hey, there's not much we could have done that yeah. night. And I think I thought the Michigan State game was like that. Yeah, and, the, and you're going to run into those in the Big Ten Conference. Oh, yeah, Michigan State's good. More times than not even. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's the thing with Minnesota, that Minnesota game. It's a credibility win because if me and you come back here – on Monday after that game, after a loss by Nebraska, and, mm-hmm. and say, yeah, well, Fred's doing a good job. They're, they've they adapted to this new style. Well, you need – come on. People are – you know, I don't want to hear it if you lose, yeah. even if it's close, even if it's an overtime loss. No. This was a credibility win. They went on the road and won a game they absolutely had to win. And now – And it frankly, sets up, sh- should have won, Sip. I guess. I mean, I don't say that about Nebraska. It's hard to say that because they've been down for so long. They just won I 10 understand. games last year. I so understand I don't, it, yeah. I don't put should have too much on them. I'm going to say something this now, now, though. I wouldn't be surprised if they beat Illinois tomorrow. Well, so Illinois – Tomorrow. We're, yeah, we're about, to, we're about to get to our, our final segment and close out the 6 o'clock hour. Nebraska hosts Illinois tomorrow night, 8 p.m., um, Final line, I 10 and five on the year, one and three in the conference. They just got their first conference win over the weekend, uh, beating Wisconsin at home. Here's something interesting a five star freshman, Sky Clark, stepped away from the Illinois team a couple days ago for personal reasons. Clark was averaging over eight points per game mm. and it appeared in 13 games for mm. Illinois. Mm. So there's there's stuff going on there with yep. Brad Underwood and, and with uh, the fight in the line. I, but you know, it's hey. what it is. I love Nebraska to win this game. I do too. 8 p.m. It's going to be a little bit later of a tip off, but I mean, I'll be there. Will you be there? I will be. You got it. You got an assignment. Get up up 5 a.m. Whoa. Here we go.